That isn't me you see here, but it is how all of this got started. As I tell the story, I see in retrospect how one's life can be, especially when you do what I do for a living. <laughs> That's a joke, you know, for a living. By the way, I'm an assassin. Oh, all right, a killer, but retired. For certain reasons, I thought it would be a little more respectable, not to mention more safe doing something else, which I have been, and you'll see what that is a little later. In my line of work, sometimes people just don't get along, and they won't let things be, and they do foolish things. Very foolish things. I always told myself never get too close to your work, but hindsight is twenty twenty, and never say never in case hurrah, hurrah, and blah blah blah. What the hell? <sighs> Where was I? Oh. And something else. Needless to say, it's not easy to retire from a job like mine and still be among the living. But I got it worked out. So I thought. Anyway, watch and you'll see. Because this is my story. This time it's not business. It's strictly personal. Take a look. We'll be a little bit more. You know what, Paul? I think I can see your toes. Wiggle them for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just what I thought. You haven't been watched between those things. There's nothing to worry about. There's a bug going around, and he caught it. Half the neighborhood's been in SEMA already. But as for you, Paul, just make sure you keep those feet clean, all right, buddy? You feel better before you know it. Wow, I didn't realize it was so late. Do you have someone walk you home or pick you up? Oh, we're just down the block. We'll be are all right. You, are you sure? It'll only take me a few minutes to close up. 
No, we're fine, really. Thank you for staying to see us. I knew it was silly. No, you did the right thing. Just be careful going home, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Good night. I'm sorry we're closed for the night. Listen, if you're looking for drugs, I don't have anything in here stronger than aspirin. I swear. No thanks, Doc. I'm trying to quit. Okay, how can I help you? We need to see you outside. What is it? Is someone hurt? What is it? Is someone hurt? Get outside now! I don't know what you all want from me, but but if it's money... Money? <laughs> Clarence. You don't mind if I call you Clarence, do you? No. Good. Clarence, the kind of money you make wouldn't cover five minutes with my god-ugliest tour. Then what is it? What do you want from me? Who says I want anything from you? I just want you to meet some people. Is that all right with you? Who? What people? Ooh. These gentlemen right here, Mr. Marshall, Mr. Pax, Mr. Riley, Mr. Paltrow, and I'm Tony Ransom. Gentlemen, please say hello to Dr. Clarence Garrett. to the future. Peace be with you. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. How long has it been since your last confession? Six months, I guess, or maybe seven. I've been busy, you know. And how have you sinned, my son? He's 
impure thoughts about my secretary. Nothing really sick, but, well, impure, eh? I know there shouldn't be, because I'm married. But if you could just see her, I'd... Oh. Sorry, Father. For your penance, say 20 Hail Marys, and know that God forgives you, my son. Thank you, Father. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. How long has it been since your last confession? For your penance, say ten Our Fathers, and know that God forgives you, my son. Thank you very much, Father. Peace be with you. What is it you wish to confess?
Hello, Father. It's Virgil. Oh, yes. How are you? Well, actually, not very well. I'm kind of feeling under the weather. I was wondering if you might be able to uh, handle my service uh, this evening. Of course. That's not a problem. Okay. Thanks. I'll call you in a couple days. All right. You get some rest now. Okay. You too. This evening, our reading comes to us from the book of Revelation. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on a throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loosen the seals thereof? And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as if it were the sound of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red.
And I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And hell followed with him. Description I wear that
Hello, Izzy. Who's there? What the? Virgil, is that really you? I... It can't be. I hope you don't mind me letting myself in. You. <laughs> you damn lions. <laughs> Sit down. It's been a long time. How? How did you do it? Who died in the fire? That was my Karen. Karen. So you got him after all. We thought he skipped on when he heard there was a price on his head. But why'd you let everybody believe that you were dead? Let's say I had my reasons. Your reasons? <laughs> it's been 12 years. This calls for a little celebration. Here's us. And that poor Mike Karen for allowing you to be here today. <sighs> this is unbelievable. You're here. I guess you heard about Clarence. That's why I'm here. So who did it? I don't know for sure. I only heard rumors, just talk. What kind of talk? There are four guys. You know the type. They splatter your brains all over the place and then brag about it later. They work for Tony Ransom. Isn't that Frank's son? Yeah. Two years ago, Frank put him in charge of the Eden. Now he's around the whole operation. Moves fast, you know what I'm saying? So what did he have to do with Clarence? Who knows? Maybe Clarence was bed money he didn't have or a drug deal went bad. Look, he wasn't like that, and you know it. Yeah. Sorry. I want names, and I want places. I don't think this is such a good idea. See, this Ransom kid is connected. I mean, really connected. You go after him, and he'll be scraping off his Gucci's. So what is it? You need money? I can always use an extra buck like the next guy, but that's not what I'm talking about. When was the last time you looked in somebody's eyes and pulled the trigger? About 12 years, right? People change. They slow down. They get sloppy. And from where I was sitting, I can see you put on a few pounds. Catch my drift? We're not like we used to be. I understand. I'll take care of it myself. All right, all right. I'm a businessman. I'm not afraid to take a little risk as long as there's something in it for me. You know, I'm used to getting paid. There's 10,000. You get another 10 when I'm finished. For sure. Tom Paltrow. Ransom owns the garage across from the Rialto. Paltrow works there. From what I hear, he's stupid as hell. But 
real dangerous. All right. Thanks. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Uh, uh, where are you saying? How do I get a hold of you? You don't. I'll get a hold of you. Something I can do for you? Are you Tom Paltrow? That's right. And who are you? Father Garrett. So what do you need, Father? I want you to repeat after me. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. What? Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And how long has it been since your last confession? Talking about? I'm talking about the doctor you killed the other night. Who says I killed any doctor? His name was Clarence Garrett. He was my brother. God does not forgive you, my son. Well, we're in business. go for it. I knew it. Here, have a drink. Hell, a whole damn bottle. You've earned it. Now sit down. I want to know everything. <sighs> Not much to tell, really. I, I flew into Lagos. They picked me up like they were supposed to. We talked. They said yes. Here I am. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? They said yes. It, just that. They accepted our offer. Everything? Well, I, I gave him the hundred grand, and I told him another half million follows at the pickup. Damn! All my life, I've dreamed of something this big. And now it's here. So what's the matter with you? Nothing. <laughs> Don't tell me nothing. I mean, you just arranged the deal of the century. And you act as if your damn dog just died. What's the matter? These guys we're dealing with, Tony, they scare me. They're just from another country. Don't worry about it. No, really, there's something about them. They're not the sort of people we're used to. Things are different over there. Mike, let me explain something. You don't get where we are by playing with little fish. I know, but I... You gotta swim with the sharks, you understand me? I know, I know. Mike, what's going on here? I'm depending on you. I can't have you falling apart on me. I won't. Mike. This deal, I mean, it's big. We're opening doors. 
We've seen the future. And it's ours. And I'm not going to let anything or anybody get up for me. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, what is it? Paltrow's dead. Dead? How? Bang, bang. One right between the eyes, one through the heart. Now, what suicidal f would do something like that? I mean, everybody knows Paltrow works for me. All right. Some soul wants to make a nuisance of himself? Fine. Mr. Nuisance has a name. And I want it. Get going. And there is something else. I don't know if it means anything, but I figured you want to know. And you got here at what time? About midnight. Um, he was supposed to pick me up around 11. We had a date. I called and no one answered, so I thought I'd just stop by. But he was dead. Look, uh, why don't you have a seat? I'll be right back. Who'd she say he was? Tom Paltrow. Works here as a mechanic. Paltrow? Paltrow, I know this guy. He took time for assault and battery a few years back. You think this might be drug related? Could be. What about the hand? <laughs> what sort of weirdo shoots a guy two times and then cuts off his finger? I don't know. But whoever it was was a damn good shot. You think it might mean something? Maybe. How'd you say you know her? Hmm? Oh, uh, she works at Club Eden. I gave her my card. I'm a cop, she's a waitress. Told her if she ever, you know, might need anything. All right, we better call this in. Why are you so jumpy? Besides, I'm supposed to be dead, remember? Listen, the smart guy keeps his head down. And another thing, that collar you are wearing, is that for real? Are you really a damn priest? Yes, is he? I'm a priest. Hey, how goes it? Taking fast, Mr. Ransom. My man's what I like to hear. I told you it was stupid to come hey, here. Hey, how you doing? 
good to see you. Hey, Dan. Oh, no, jeez. I'm sorry about that. Here, let me take care of that. Jerry, anything you want, it's on the house all night. Vodka for me. Keep them coming. I'll be upstairs. Didn't catch your name. Virgil. Virgil! Tony Ransom. I'm the uh, proprietor of this establishment. It's nice to uh, nice to see you. No hard feelings, all right? Are you satisfied? Can we go now? How old is he? Is that what you heard? They're making them younger nowadays. You got the short hair and the beard, this Lionel Pax. He's one of the ones you want. He works here doing odd jobs, as in whatever Ransom wants him to do. And the three you'll be looking for are Bill Riley, Neil Marshall, and Tom Paltrow. Paltrow's done. You don't mess around, do you? So what about the others? There's Riley. He works as a bookkeeper, if you know what I mean, for Regal Loan Company, which Ransom owns. When he's in the office, he parks his car in the underground parking garage on Capitol Boulevard, a green explorer. He usually gets off work around 10 or 11. Got the ponytail? That's Marshall. He works here as a doorman sometimes. I don't know anything else about him except that he's just mean, a real sicko. I've got his address if you want it. And that's George Haney. He's Ransom's right-hand man, but he didn't have nothing to do with whacking Clarence. Listen, I don't like this. I gotta go. All right, I'll contact you later. Okay, as long as it's not here. Catch my drift? When I first took over this place, it was Deadsville. You know what I mean? I mean, the waitresses looked like pigs. The patrons, they didn't even dress. <laughs> I mean, it was a damn dive. Now look at it. It's happening. Maybe we'll put one of these up in L.A. What do you think? Nobody saw anything, but <clears throat> we found this. I want his name. Do you understand me? All right. I want his name, and then I want his skin on my wall. All right. <clears throat> Don't say all right. Do it! Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Bill Ryan. What the hell are you doing? 
I'm Father Garrett, and I want you to repeat after me. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. What's wrong with you? I said, repeat after me. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. No! I'm not going to do it! No! No! And God does not forgive you, my son. Pretty creative, huh? Yeah. I mean, why beat somebody up with a car antenna and then shoot him? Because you can. We're, uh, we're still searching the garage. Don't bother, you won't find it. Virgil Garrett is dead. He was killed, blown to pieces by a car bomb. It says so right here in your own report. What if I was wrong? I mean, what if he faked his death? There was no real way to ID the corpse. It was Garrett's car, so we assumed it was his body. Explain to me again just why you're so sure he's responsible for these two killings. Look, 12 years ago, we had a string of pro-mob-style killings. It took nearly a year before I was even able to get as much as a name. A guy named Virgil Garrett. Still, a name was all I had. He was like a ghost, a name on the street. But his M.O. was very specific. He also cut a finger off every victim. They said he did it to show whoever was paying him to do the hit that he did the job his own unique signature. What makes you think we aren't just looking at another copycat here? That seems a lot more plausible than bringing back the dead. There was a doctor who was murdered last week. Shot to death. Massacred is more like it. Simons investigated that. Looked like somebody tried to hit him up for drugs. He didn't have what they wanted and so on and so on. You know the story. We yeah. see it every day. Yes, but this doctor's name was Clarence Garrett. He was Virgil's brother. And those two guys that were killed, both of them worked for Tony Ransom. A professional muscle. You're telling me these two killed the doctor? Why? I don't know that yet. Could be he was supplying Ransom with drugs cheated him or something went wrong. I don't know. This sounds pretty thin. All you've got are two corpses with missing fingers. That's all. 
Lieutenant Virgil Garrett is back. I can feel it. He's hunting the men who killed his brother, and he isn't going to stop until he gets Ransom himself. Believe me. All right. Let's say you're right, and this Virgil Garrett has returned. I say, let someone else handle it. You're retiring in less than two weeks. Listen, back then, I spent a year trying to pin one murder on that bastard, let alone find him. And when they pulled his corpse out of that burning car, I could have sworn I heard him laughing at me. Come on, Lieutenant. I've got this one coming. Take care of him. Just call if anything happens. Yeah. Everything all right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just the wife. Told her we might be working late. Not to wait up. Don't want her to worry. You know how it is. Sure, sure. Let's see. Give me a heart attack. You know, there was a time you never would have walked into a dark room unless you turned the light out first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I told you before, we're different now. We're not the same people. I don't know where you're, where you're staying or how to get a hold of you. You, you. you just pop up. I can't do business like this. You're getting paid, aren't you? That's what you care about. Damn right, that's all I care about. And you know, there was a time I remember you didn't turn down a deal either. So have you heard anything new? I heard you whacked Riley. And? Something's coming. I don't know what, but some big names are coming to town. I was thinking maybe now's not the time to be getting in people's faces. I'll take care of it. You're serious? You really think you can take this guy? Just remember what I told you. He's well connected. Psalm 10, verse 15. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness, till thou findest none. Gentlemen. Welcome to the future. Look, I'm here only because you are Frank's kid, but blood only buys so much of my time. So, get to the point, I got things to do. <clears throat> I think after you hear what I have to say, you'll find your time well spent. Gentlemen, every industry has a revolution. 
a defining, irrevocable moment when everything changes. The old ways of doing things are discarded like so many old worn shoes. Organized crime, as we know it, is about to undergo such a revolution. What I'm offering you here tonight is a piece of the future. What the hell are you talking about? All of us here deal in the usual assortment of illegal merchandise, guns, pornography, numbers. But I've got something to offer you that is infinitely more profitable. Opium. Nobody screws around with that anymore. Exactly. That's why I'm bringing it back. Make it fashionable, if you will. You see, we as Americans can place a man on the moon. We can land a camera on Mars. But as businessmen, the world is passing us by. That is why I work an exclusive deal with our Nigerian counterparts in Lagos, in which I will become the sole American distributor. In time, I will control the sale of opium in America. Let me get this straight. You buy this stuff from the Nigerians and then sell it here to whoever wants it? You figure that Every dove-headed punk and his brother is going to want some? Exactly. You seem to have this whole thing fixed clean and tight. So, what do you need those for? I don't have the connections you've got. I mean, you guys are in Hollywood. You've got the politicians, the athletes. Alone, it would take me much longer to set up my distribution network. So what you're saying is, you want us to buy the stuff from you. Is that it? I'm talking about a mutually beneficial arrangement. You know something? You got some balls on you. I give you that. But no brains. A few years ago, you were just a punk kid running your dad's nightclub. And now you are a punk kid trying to sell drugs. I got news for you. None of us here are drug dealers. We got much more self-respect than that. That's what's wrong with this country today. And we don't want no part of it. And another thing. I've been hearing that somebody has been off in your guys. How are you going to take care and manage these opium things if you can't take care of your own people? <laughs> Won't choose? Ha, you got a lot to learn from this one choose. Say hello to your father for me. What? Yeah, yeah, so how'd it go? It didn't. Well, so what do we do now? We'll find somebody else or we'll distribute ourselves. No, I'm talking about the shooter. Maybe you should talk to Dad. I can handle it, understand? I just need some time to think. Mm.
Mommy don't feel too good right now, and I may not be around for a while. Do you understand? I'm gone, all you have is each other. To try your best to stay together and always love each other. And Virgil, promise me to always take care of your little brother. I promise. I promise. Tony. What? Got that name you wanted. And? One of our cops came through. Guy you want is Virgil Garrett. <laughs> Virgil Garrett? Who is that? Yeah, he's a pro. He used to work for your dad about 12 years ago. Everybody thought he was dead. <laughs> so why is he whacking my guys? That doctor you whacked was his brother. So, what do we know about this Virgil Garrett? Well, I did some checking around, and the only thing I come up with was uh, an old pro he used to work with, Isaac Goldman. They say he used to be pretty good. Ah, he did, huh? I'll find this Isaac Goldman. I want to talk to him. Do you have his address or not? What's it worth to me? Listen, I've been up all damn night and I don't have time for this. Do you hear me? That's more like it. Got it. Find a ghost. with the door. I figured you'd be by sooner or later, so I thought I'd save you the trouble. You know, picking the locks. What's going on? I had a visit from Tony Ransom today. How much is he paying you? I'd like to say he made me a deal I couldn't refuse, but that'd be a lie. Truth is, he offered me more than enough to keep me happy in my twilight years. I see. Don't act so surprised. 
I told you I'm a businessman. I'm only in this for the money, that's all. I'm not surprised. Well, what the hell do you expect? You asked me to help you take out a guy like Ransom? Sooner or later, he would have killed you, Virgil. Then he would have killed me, too. You know, you used to be a pro. But now you're nothing but a damn wrecking ball. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You look so righteous, like you're on some damn holy crusade. You know what I think? I think you came back because you wanted to come back. You live for the vengeance is mine, and I will repay. Shut the hell up! Yeah, Jacobs and I are here right now. Looks like his neck's been broken. All right. You better get forensics in the corner over there right away. You got it. We'll see you at the office. Now we have a special request and message that goes out to the shadow from hell. The time has been long. Let's meet again in our favorite place at our favorite time. And now, Adagio for Organ and Strings by Tommaso Albanoni, arranged for four cellos by Mark Tanner. After reading the report and then listening to Detective Lansing, I didn't know what to think. I figured if it was really you, you'd still be listening to your classical music on the radio, and you'd know well. Yes, but I don't think I'm the shadow anymore. No. They know it's you. What am I going to do? Your job, Lena. And let me do mine. What? Virgil? You're a killer. As much as I don't like to admit it, I've always known it. But that means you're the bad guy. I'm a cop now. Cops arrest the bad guys. You want me to do that? And let's not forget, I spent six years of my life with you. We had a child together. We were going to get married. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Don't you understand the problem I'm having? After the baby died, you changed. What happened? Why did you leave? You never would have been safe being married to me. You know the business. Figured that was a great time to make a clean break. I just want to give your life back to you. This is bad. This is really bad. I've got to do something, and I don't know what. Listen to me. 
I'm here to take care of something and it's going to be done. So you do what you have to do. And I'll do the same. Are you crazy? What are you doing having your boy pick me up like this? What if somebody saw me? They know that you're in my pocket. They know you're working for me. I'd have no more use for you. I'd have you killed. George tells me you're investigating this Virgil Garrett. Me and Lansing both are, yeah. Well, I'd be interested in hearing what you found out. Why don't you ask your father? Lansing thinks Garrett used to work for him. I'm not paying you to tell me who to ask. I'm paying you for information. We haven't found much. The one lead we did have was this guy named Isaac Goldman, but he's... Yeah, I know. Isaac Goldman, he's, he's already dead. I already know that. I guess he's not as good as what I thought. Well, that was it. We're at a dead end. All right. Well, here's the situation. I'm in some rather delicate negotiations. This Virgil Garrett, he's not a problem. But he is a bother, understand? And as long as he's out there, my credibility and my reps suffer. Like I said, we're at a dead end. Yeah, well, just the same. I've got a feeling, call it a hunch, that if you find this guy, you won't be able to take him alive. Catch my meaning? All right, look, giving you information is one thing, but I never, never, Agreed to do your killing for you. When you told me about that undercover cop, you knew he was good as dead. And when you told me the Mick Canner was gonna roll, you signed his death warrant. So you see, you do do my killings for me. Detective Jacobs, you can go anytime. I don't know who you are or what you're doing here. I'm Neil Marshall's wife. You know who he is? Yes. Good. Then I suggest you get out of here right now or you're going to be in deep. Mrs. Marshall, I want to know where your husband is. And it's important you understand that if you don't tell me, I will kill you, I will kill your dog. 
I will kill your children. Now, you understand what I've just asked you? Yes. Do you believe what I've just told you? Yes. Where is he? He said he had some business at one of Tony Ransom's warehouses. It's, it's on the corner of 4th and Weldon. God bless you, Mrs. Marshall, for taking care of your children and your dog. They should be here in 10 minutes. When I saw in Lagos, these guys need to be handled carefully. Don't spook them. Make sure your guns are obvious. Just, just keep them pointed down. Y'all got that? My guys know what they're doing. Look, Tony put me in charge, not you. It's mine, anything goes wrong. Nothing will go wrong. You haven't met these guys, I have. Just keep them pointed down. When they get here, we'll make the exchange all at once. I'll hand over the cash while, while Marshall gets the stuff. Then we'll just we'll step back and wait for him to leave. You got it? We've already been over all this, Mike. Relax. You got it? You hand over the cash, I get the stuff. Yeah, I think I got it. Guns down. Whoa, whoa. We, we agreed to make the trade all at once. Uh, I'll give you the cash while you give us the stuff, right? I mean, I mean, that's what we agreed, right?
I don't believe this. Tell me this is all a damn joke. This cannot be happening. Tony, we... Mike, don't. Don't say another damn word. Mike, you're my little brother. But if you say another word, I'm gonna cut out your heart. Do you know what you've done? Do you? It was Virgil Garrett. It had to be. Virgil Garrett. I am sick and tired of hearing his name. What the hell am I supposed to do now? I've got a suitcase full of opium that I haven't paid for. What do you think this looks like? Those Nigerians probably think this was a setup. It happened so fast. What were we supposed to do? Throw the money at them! Stuff it down their damn throat! Anything but this! All right. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to get in touch with him. Tell him it's not our fault. Tell him we're handling it. Set up another meeting to hand over the cash. Hey, you think they'll go for that? We did kill one of their men. You better make damn sure they do. What about Garrett? was to keep him from at the next meeting. You sure it was him? Nobody else can shoot like that. Maybe you should talk to Dad, huh? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should. I wish to God I knew how Garrett knew about the meeting. Somebody must have told him that Marshall was going to be there. But who? So close. Why didn't you listen to me and let someone else take this case? Lieutenant, how do you stop a ghost? That's what he is. A real live ghost. After 12 years, he comes back from the dead to avenge his brother's death. Everyone can be stopped. If it is him, we'll catch him. That's the thing that scares me. What if I finally catch him? I mean, after 12 years, I get them turned in my sights. It still doesn't do any good. I, I can't stop him. He's like a damn ghost. Why don't you go home? You're drunk. No. Oh. Just leave me alone. I'll be fine. By the way, have you heard anything from Jacobs? No. That's another thing. Something's wrong. This isn't like him to just disappear. Well, I'm sure he'll turn up one way or another. What are we gonna do with this? I don't know. But he's not gonna be needing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing a lot of bad things about you lately. Tony, you're immature, impetuous, rude, and short, nothing but a snotted nose. 
Young boy tried to play in a man's world, but this time you've gone too far. You've um, screwed with the wrong man. Look, I, I didn't come here for this. I know. <laughs> you came to beg. <laughs> Oh, yes, you came to beg. Virgil Garrett. He was a damn heat-seeking missile. And he's locked onto you. <laughs> and you're terrified and you want Daddy to save you. Oh, yes, you came to beg. <laughs> Tell me, why did you kill his brother, Clarence? Let's just say it was necessary. Necessary, necessary, huh? <laughs> you know, Virgil, when he would do a job for me, would cut off the finger of the victim and bring it to me as proof that he made the hit. And, and instead of some other guy, I told him that it wasn't necessary, but he just said, it's okay. It's no trouble. So was it just, um, Necessary or just no trouble. Good old man. I'll handle it myself. What's up, Lieutenant? We found Jacobs. Don't let me down. I don't want to hear more bad news. I don't know, Tony. I mean, we killed one of their guys. Trust me. They're businessmen. They just want their money. You've got the future right there in your hand. So get going and stop worrying.
What is it? It's me, Mr. Ransom. I'm at the club. What's going on? Something's wrong. What do you mean, what? Something smells funny. Smell funny? What? I don't know. Well, check it out. Okay, hold on. Who are you and how did you get in here? Come on, come on. Are you coming? And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. We got trouble.
that. You in here? like a lamb to the slaughter. We gotta get out of here. Something's wrong. What is she doing? Come on, now! Get out of here.
Tony. Hi, this is Marcy. Do you remember me? I work at your club. Well, I, I know these people that know these other people, and anyway, we were all talking, and uh, they were saying that you were looking for some guy named Virgil Garrett. Well, I, I know this guy that knows this girl, and anyway, she works at the Omni, and uh, she said that there's someone checked in there named Virgil Garrett. I thought he might like to know. <clears throat> Omni Hotel. Yeah, give me the room of Virgil Garrett. Oh, Father Garrett, yes. Father Garrett? You, isn't it? You got my brother too! If you think this makes us even, you are so wrong. I'm gonna rip your head off your shoulders. You understand me? Okay, tough guy. You want me? Meet me in my warehouse. Midnight. I'm sure you know where it is. We're gonna settle this! Mr. Ransom. time <laughs> yes it has I'm sorry but Clarence he was a he was a good kid yeah you know I'm here to kill Tony yes as far as I'm concerned he's he's already dead <laughs> How is, uh, <laughs> how's everything in Canada? So it was you that put the newspaper in the confessional? Might say that, yes. I don't understand. If you've known where I was all these years, why haven't you said anything? Virgil, you know that I've always looked at you as a son. And I've uh, uh, always respected your decision to get out. But, why a priest? Because in the Bible there's no doubts, no gray areas. If we sin, we're judged. It doesn't make any difference whether we're punished or forgiven, because we're still judged. As a priest, I'm the instrument of that judgment. You see, every day people come to me and confess their sins. I hear them, and through the eyes of God, I punish or forgive as they deserve. When I worked for you, I was the instrument of your judgment, so now I guess you could say I work for God. I see. 
So I guess I really didn't quit. Aren't you? <coughs> Bone cancer. Emphysema. Pain is unbearable. They tell me I have to live with this for another three months, but if I had the guts... <coughs> if I had the guts, I'd end it myself. I'll keep you in my prayers. Virgil, I... I... I need you to do me one last favor. <laughs> Mr. Ansem, I can't. All the doors and windows are locked. There's one way in and one way out, and that's through that door. Nobody gets out of here until I see his corpse. Got me? Got me? All right. I want you and you. Brad, find him!
anybody. You can hear me, you son of a... You wanna know why I killed your brother? You see, I had this deal. And I had to prove to some people that I could handle trouble. The problem was, I didn't have any. So one night, I went in my office, I opened the phone book, closed my eyes and picked out a name. <laughs> Imagine that. It just happened to be your blue light brother.
unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. I know you. You were in the club to drink. I want you to repeat after me. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Look, I got money. I can pay you whatever you I said, repeat after me. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Father, I am sin. And how long has it been since your last confession? I don't know. I don't know. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? Die. No! And I do not forgive you, my son. I don't know what to do. I've done my job. You do yours. You're dead. Goodbye. Well, that's the way it was. I do still think about it, but not for too long. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Maybe he is, he was right. 
Maybe I do live for this, and maybe I am just a damn wrecking ball. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Nevertheless, that was my brother, and I did make a promise to my mother. Now as for the priest thing in the Bible, I don't know. I guess something got twisted there. Humble yourself therefore unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. My name is Virgil Garrett. If you see me, <laughs> it's not business. It's strictly personal. Be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour.